Hello, friendly player, friendly player. Up, How's it going? Just running around looking for melee weapons. I have nothing. You have nothing? I can Got give a you a sledgehammer. Do you like a sledgehammer? Can I have that sledgehammer? That would be perfect. I'd be happy to hook you up with a sledgehammer. Here you go. Here's a sledgehammer. That should be helpful to you. Appreciate it, bro. My name is Peter. I'm the Missionary Gamer. We live stream on Twitch. It's very nice to meet you. You too, sir. Don't suppose you have any food. Wait, where you headed? You? I do. I would be grateful for anything. I'm in the red. Oh, some sardines. See, that's that's wonderful. Thank you very yeah, much. There you go, buddy. Thank you for the sledgehammer. I, ne I needed it. <laughs> you are most welcome. You know where the water spigot is right up here on the hill? Uh, Yes, yes, I do. That's where actually where I was headed, I think. Oh, good. Well, I'll head up with you. My friend's over there. Now I got some food. I'll be able to survive, hopefully. He's been feeding me pears and getting me sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it okay if I ask just your first name? I'm Daryl, buddy. Nice Darryl. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Always nice to. Oop, wrong way. Where am I going here? Can't walk and chew gum at the same time. So, Daryl, um, one of the things we like to do is ask people questions on stream. Would it be okay if I asked you a question? Sure. Would you consider yourself to be a good person? Uh, yeah. Can I ask you some questions to qualify that? Sure. All right. In your lifetime, how many lies have you told? I'm sure, I've told several little lies. For the most part, I'm pretty truthful. What do you call somebody who tells lies? A liar? Exactly. So if you've told a couple of lies, what would that make you then? Guess I'm a liar, buddy. All right. And I appreciate your honesty moving forward. In your lifetime, have you ever stolen anything? Never. Never stolen? Well, you did just tell me you were a liar a minute ago. You want to maybe think about that for a minute? Downloaded something from the internet without paying for it? Uh, Ooh. not stealing. That's, uh, that's yeah, not stealing at all. You know why? It. It's not stealing. It it's called piracy. I didn't take it from them. No. Next question is, have you ever used God's name as a cuss word? Oh, yeah, I cuss all the time, buddy. Blasphemy, that's very serious. Jesus said, you know it said that you shouldn't commit adultery. But I tell you, even if you've looked at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at another person with lust? Oh, well, yeah, but it's time at my wife. What are you talking about? Jesus said, if you've ever called your brother a fool, been really angry at somebody, you've actually committed murder in your heart. Have you ever been really angry at somebody else? I get, I get angry at myself. Self, buddy, I don't really take out on the people. It is what it is. I don't get ra road rage or nothing. Well, that's good. That's good. But you have been angry at somebody else at some point in your life. I mean, not, I've been disappointed with folks. Not really angry. Okay. Well, we'll just go with the top two then, or the top three. So the reason why I'm asking these questions around the good person test is the reality is we think we're good people when we compare ourselves to each other. But the reality is the standard for good is actually moral perfection. And I want to be clear. This is not me judging you. But you've just admitted to being a lying, blasphemous, adulterate heart. So let's say today was the day that you died. And you're standing before God. And he opens up the books on your whole life. Everything you've ever said. Everything you've ever done. Everything you've even thought. Would he find you innocent or guilty of breaking his laws? I don't know. I know I'm getting in, though. How do you know you're getting in? Oh, buddy. He forgives everybody. He forgives everybody. Gets forgiven. everybody. Are you sure about that? Most part. That's, All right. that's what I believe, buddy. Okay, well, what are, you, what are you basing that belief off of? How do you know that's true? That's just that's just what I believe. If you're a good person through life, for the most part, I think you're good to go. Well, the problem is we've already established that you're actually just like the rest of us. You're not a good person. A lying, blaspheming, uh, adulterate heart is not a good person. The reality is when you stand before God, he's going to look at you and say, wait a minute, all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. You have his word that says he will cast you in that terrible place called hell, which I just met you, I love you, you seem like a really nice guy. I certainly don't want you to go there. And so there's something that God did for guilty sinners like you and I so that we don't have to go to hell. Any What's idea? That? Well, you probably heard some of this. There's a man named Jesus Christ. Have you ever heard about him? Yes, sir. All right, so 2,000 years ago, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be born miraculously of a virgin. He lived a perfect life, never sinned, not even once, did everything that was pleasing to his Father in heaven. And then he went to the cross as an innocent man. Do you know why they put him on that cross 2,000 years ago? Uh, why is that, buddy? Because he claimed to be God, which is blasphemous, deserving of the death sentence. However, there is an exception to that rule. We'll get to that in a second. While he was on the cross, he didn't just die. He actually took the wrath of God for our sins, for our lying, for our blaspheming, for our stealing, for, for everything that we've done against him. And then right before he died, he said three very important words. And you're kind of burning yourself there, uh, Daryl. You might want to back up a little bit. Daryl, right before he died, he said three very important words. Do you know what they were? Daryl?
Did he just burn himself? Yep. That's on them, man. I'm here. I'm sharing the gospel with them. The most important truth he can possibly know. And he decided instead to leave the game. If we proclaim the gospel. If somebody walks off or leaves, I don't grab them and try to hold on to them. Although I would like to. For those of you guys who might be watching who are like, hey, I started to hear the gospel, Peter, but this guy didn't want to hear it. I want to hear it. Well, here's the deal, guys. While Jesus was on the cross, he didn't just die. He actually took the wrath of God for us. And then right before he died, he said three very important words. He said, it is finished. Meaning the debt is paid. And then he died, and he was buried in a tomb for three days. But then something miraculous happened. What was it, John? He arose. Proving that he was who he said he was. God himself, and that he could do what he said he did. When he said, it is finished. He was seen by his disciples. He was seen by over 500 eyewitnesses over the course of 40 days. And then he ascended into heaven, and right now he's seated at the Father's right hand. Jesus said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. <laughs> no one comes to the Father except through me. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. But here's the object lesson of this player character's uh, corpse now. Is that this is the state that we are in. We are born spiritually dead. And what can a dead man do? Nothing. All he can do is rot. That's it. We are all in the same state that this guy is in right here. And he proved the spiritual deadness of his own soul when he's hearing the good news and instead of just listening and saying, hey, thanks for sharing me, I appreciate it. Instead he pulls this. Think about that. What is going on in your in your heart, in your mind? If, if you have somebody who's helped you, they say, hey, I love you, I wanna tell you this good news. You can be saved from the wrath of God. You can know for sure that you're saved. Here's all you have to do, you repent, put your faith and trust in Christ. And your response is not even to hear it out, but instead to destroy your character in the game. And without God's work that he does, this is where we would all be. You cannot save yourself. It is not based on your good works. Your good works are not good to God. Our good works are like filthy rags to him. Are you going to start hearing the gospel and behave like this poor lost soul, Daryl, and, and not even hear it out? Or are you going to stop and say, wait a minute, this is the best news ever. A loving God has made a way for a guilty sinner like me to be saved. What do I got to do? You got to repent and put your faith and trust in his son and be saved from the wrath to come or die in your sins and trespasses and be cast into that lake of fire. I wish Daryl had a state. I wish he had heard the whole thing out, but he didn't. <coughs> and that was on him, not on me, not on you, not anybody else. But we're going to take a minute and we're going to pray for Daryl. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, share the gospel with Daryl. But Lord, you know his heart and he left before he heard the good news. Father, please demonstrate your long suffering. Demonstrate your patience. Demonstrate your grace and mercy to Daryl by giving him another chance to hear the gospel and that you would soften his heart. You would do that work that only you can do and you'd give him that gift of faith that he might repent and put that faith and trust in your son and be saved from the wrath to come. I pray this knowing what a good and loving and awesome God you are and how you constantly demonstrate how much you love us by being patient with us. How many times had I rejected this good news and yet you saved me? And so I pray, Father, for Daryl that you would save him. I ask all this in Jesus Christ's name, a King and Savior. Amen. 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 Man, that was sad. Wow. Not the first time. I've had that happen. No, it's not, it's not going to be the last time either. No, I know. It doesn't, it doesn't make it any better, don't get me wrong, but... I mean, I couldn't have put it any better myself. Let's praise God for that, you know, you being a servant in Christ, Peter. Like, I couldn't have put that word to that better myself, how you, what you said. Oh, well, I appreciate that, Joe. I am hopeful that God will be at work. He might be saved. He saved a wretched sinner like me after 40 years of rejecting him, so we can save him as well.